Hello everyone and welcome to this talk on AI and free software in the European Union. My name is Alexander Sander, I'm working for the Free Software Foundation Europe and um, yeah, this is a charity that empowers users to control technology and we do believe um, that this could be done with the help of free software. And in the next yeah, 15 minutes I want to tell you why free software is so important um, in general but also uh, specifically um, in regard to artificial intelligence and at the moment um, yeah, we are discussing in the European Union um, how to um, yeah um, how to find ways to um, put a law in place um, to regulate um, AI artificial intelligence and um, by last we can also um, yeah set a standard for the world and that's why it's very important to make sure that free software plays a role in this regulation and uh, yeah said so in the next 15 minutes I will tell you why and um, how to do this first of all. Um, um, let me introduce again the concept of um, free software, also known as um, open source. So um, I guess you are all familiar with this, but um, still to bring us on the um, same page and in order to make sure we um, know what we are talking about and why it is so important, um, I will um, introduce the four freedoms um, of free software. So for, first of all, um, you are free to use the software, you can study the software, you can share it and you can improve it. So when we have these four freedoms, we talk about free software, also known as open source. And this means, um, yeah, you are free to use the software for any purpose without any restrictions, any limitations. So you can um, yeah, simply use it. Also, the code is transparent, but thus you can study the code. It can be analyzed by anyone. Um, this is uh, specifically important when we talk about transparency. Um, this is a key debate around AI. Um, but also you are free to share the software without any limitations um, and here also the price doesn't matter so you can, can earn money with free software and this is also um, done and you are free to improve the software. So this means it can be modified by anyone and these modifications can be also um, used by others so you are giving back to the community by improving the softwares so um, yeah, others don't have to reinvent the wheel but can um, also build on what you have already Done. So whenever you have these four freedoms to use, study, share and improve, we talk about um, free software and I think you already get an idea now why it is so important to use free software in AI. But um, yeah, let's have a closer look um, on our demands from FSFE and why we think um, we need free software in AI. So first of all, it's about fundamental rights, right? So we need to make sure that AI, artificial intelligence, respects fundamental rights. There's a huge debate ongoing on how to protect fundamental rights and I think um, yeah, free software is key in order to make sure that we can protect fundamental rights. Um, and um, in this regard um, we want to have transparent, fair and accessible AI. Um, by thus we can see what the software is um, supposed to do. Um, we can see if it's respect fundamental rights but also we can see if it's maybe discriminating for example. And in the end, I think we all want to have AI in place. We want to use AI and we will use AI, um, but we need to make sure that it helps us and not restrict us or even um, worst, uh, yeah, um, interferes with our fundamental rights or discriminate us. And therefore, I said we need free software because when we have the four freedoms, we can see, for example, what the software is supposed to do and by us we can check if fundamental rights are protected or if a software might discriminate or if it's um, not fair and uh, therefore it's really important that we um, come up with these demands in the debate and um, yeah, convince decision makers um, to have a look on the concept of free software and to introduce it in the lawmaking process and make sure um, yeah, we will have it in the law in the end. Um, but also besides of um, the fact that it protects fundamental rights there's another very important um, Point and it's about innovation yeah, and markets. And um, if we have transparent code, if we can um, collaborate and share risks, but as expertise, but also costs, then this um, helps to foster innovation. Yeah? So first of all, we don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again, so we can build on what's already out there. And by that, yeah, um, you don't have to start from scratch. 
but also um, it helps us to collaborate with others, um, to get in touch with other stakeholders, um, with other um, yeah, um, um, persons who are developing AI and um, you can exchange views but you can also exchange um, code and um, also you are free to work together with other stakeholders, not only coders but also like um, yeah, um, people from um, <laughs> from universities who might have good ideas, but also people who have already experience um, with um, a specific part of AI and so on. And by us, if we have free software, we can make sure um, everyone can collaborate and um, by us it helps innovation. Um, so we have on the one hand um, the possibility to protect fundamental rights and on the other hand um, to get straightforward with innovation and that's why I think it's key um, to use free software when it comes to AI, but for sure also in general, but um, yeah, as we are talking about AI today, um, let's uh, focus on this. And um, the, especially I think transparency um, uh, leads to innovation uh, and trust and also the possibility to modify and give back to the community. And um, yeah, also we want to have trustworthy AI um, not only in respect to fundamental rights, but also that um, citizens know um, that the software or that the AI um, they are using um, is trustworthy. And therefore, I think we have seen it in the debates around the Corona tracing apps, for example, um, that it is key that um, people uh, know what they are using, that they are part of the debate and that they can check if, for example, fundamental rights are protected. And this leads to trust and by thus um, people we also use the solutions and um, this is also key. I mean, we don't want to have um, AI out there which is uh, not going to be used and therefore trust is um, also very important. And um, yeah, this is a short wrap up of um, all the arguments why we um, um, need free software. There are also um, other points like open data, but I think um, yeah, um, free software plays an important role to make sure that we can protect fundamental rights and um, guarantee innovation. So the question is uh, what's going on in the legal process now. So um, as I said in the very beginning, um, there is currently a um, lawmaking process taking place in the European Union. Um, so the um, EU wants to regulate AI um, and therefore yeah, they drafted an AI regulation, um, also known as AI Act in the media sometimes. And um, so the current state of play is that the European Commission proposed a text um, which is now um, discussed in the European Parliament and in the Council. Unfortunately, in the proposal of the European Commission, free software doesn't play a role, so um, they don't name it, they, um, yeah, it's simply not in. Um, so what we need to make sure is that the yeah, European Parliament and European Council um, start to debate around this concept and bring it in, um, because yeah, the European Commission forgot about it. So and. This is um, actually happening, especially in the European Parliament. Um, just a few weeks ago, the European Parliament passed a resolution um, on AI. So this is not legally binding. So this is more like an opinion of the European Parliament. But uh, this opinion now plays a key role um, also in the debate about the regulation. Um, so the lawmaking process and in this resolution, yeah, the European Parliament said to itself, um, if one um, would like to frame it like that, um, that they want to include public man the principle of public money, public code um, 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 in the AI uh, regulation. Though um, it's not fully, fully in line with our PMPC demand, so they, want, they, they, they said so whenever it's possible, um, then we should procure um, free software when it comes to AI, as well, administrations, public bodies and so on. If they are using AI, they should um, use free software. This is pretty much um, yeah, um, what we want with our PMPC campaign. We want to go a bit further. We want it everywhere, every time. But still, I think this is the first um, step in the right direction. And uh, um, the European Parliament also specifically voted on this saying to procure free software when it comes to AI and this found a very huge majority in the European Parliament. So only some ECR and ID MEPs voted against. So this is um, very conservative and far right groups. Um, all the others voted in favor of this. So there was um, yeah, an overwhelming um, 
strong majority for the principle of um, procuring um, free software uh, when public bodies um, administrations are using um, AI to use free software then. Also, there was a reference to the open source strategy of the European Commission. Um, that's why it's a bit strange that the European Commission uh, itself did not include something on free software in the AI regulation. But now the European Parliament um, wants to introduce this reference as well. So the uh, European Commission, um, yeah, um, some years ago, um, now um, <laughs> released the open source strategy where they said they also want to go in the direction of um, releasing um, software they are using under free software license and I think this is then also true for free software. That's why such a reference um, is um, um, needed in the AI Act and also they acknowledge that um, if we use free software in terms of AI then it is good for innovation. So they are mainly following our arguments um, so this helped a lot that we already stepped in. Um, yeah, um, um, some months ago and around this debate and um, start to advocate around the resolution and make sure that these um, sayings um, survived and that they found a strong majority. We hope this helps us now also in the debate about the regulation. So we see the European Parliament uh, understood with a huge majority that it is very um, good for innovation, protecting fundamental rights and procurement procedures. Um, to use free software when it comes to AI. So this is um, at the moment very helpful. And also we have seen the Declaration on Digital Rights. Um, this is also a paper which was proposed by the European Commission. It's not legally binding, but it will um, lead us as an idea for future lawmaking processes. And um, yeah, in this declaration, there are references to other documents like the Berlin Declaration, for example, where we have sayings um, um, that uh, free software should play a key role. But the European Parliament now amended to this text and uh, want to make it um, very clear um, that free software is important, uh, first of all, in the light of AI. So the European Parliament wants to have a saying in this declaration on the digital rights that um, free software um, ensures transparency and um, that uh, yeah, uh, free software and uh, in the use of algorithms and AI is important. And also they are um, highlighting on a more general level that um, open standards and open source um, leads to trust. And I think these arguments are very important and if they would find or if they will there find their way in the declaration, I think this will be also key for future debates, not only about AI but in general. So therefore we are also working uh, on the declaration at the moment to make sure that the proposals of the European Parliament survive. There's currently this discussion with the Council and the Commission and then they will, yeah, um, or they want to have um, before the summer break, they want to have a final text. Let's see if it works out. And um, yeah, we are trying at the moment to make sure that these uh, amendments survive because first of all, it will help us uh, in the AI regulation to make sure we can convince council and parliament to bring in this text, but also for future legislation um, as there is a general saying that um, open source and open standards um, help to create trust. So the next steps are um, that the European Parliament uh, will discuss, discuss the AI Act, but also the declaration. Same is true for the Council. So both of them um, are um, discussing about the regulation. They are trying to amend it. And so therefore, it's um, yeah, important to make sure that we bring in um, the text after, of the resolution, but also um, um, the parts of the declaration I just showed you. So this is um, happening in the next weeks. And then um, there will be a huge debate um, yeah, for the upcoming months about um, the whole uh, file and the plan is to have a common position at least of the European Parliament and the Council by the end of the year and then they start the trialogue and discuss uh, between the institutions on the final text and therefore yeah, um, it would be key if you could um, support us in this and um, reach out to decision makers um, with the uh, mentioned um, resolution but also declaration and ask them to bring in um, the concept of free software in the regulation as well. And also this could be done on a national level. As said, the council is also debating about this at the moment. We haven't seen anything from the council in this regard. So it's also important to work on the national level on this. So whenever you are 
reaching out um, to decision makers uh, in your ministries, but also in the country in general. Make them aware of the concept of public money, public code. So with our campaign, which is um, yeah, in the meantime supported by more than 30,000 people and a lot of uh, NGOs uh, and also administrations, we want um, that um, yeah, legislation requires that uh, publicly financed software developed for the public software uh, public sector be made publicly available under a free software license. This is also true um, for AI. Feel free to watch on our website publiccode.eu to um, yeah, find more arguments on this and if you haven't signed it so far, feel free to um, yeah, also sign um, individual, individually or with your organization and um, yeah, feel free to spread the word, especially when it comes to AI, because I think it's important that we bring in the concept of free software in the AI regulation. With this, I'm going to end this talk. Unfortunately, I won't be there for a Q&A session, but feel free to send me an email um, to further discuss this or if you have any questions and else. Um, yeah, thanks for having me here at this conference and I wish you um, a very nice ongoing conference and hopefully we see each other um, yeah, next year in person. With this, I'm going to thank you.